Well, I recently did a build review of this SpeedyB Master 3X and its sibling B25. I realized after all the questions that you sent me that there's loads of video showing how to assemble this plastic frame that holds the O3 air unit and the O3 camera. But there are no videos anywhere explaining how to assemble this beautiful CNC machine frame that holds the O4 Pro air unit and camera. So I thought I'd do a dedicated video. Here it is. Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. This is all finished now. Everything's wired up, checked it out in beta flight and everything is as it should be. Anything missing is the camera, of course. Now, the really neat feature of this Master 3X and the B25, which I'll show you in a minute. I haven't got one here, but it has an interchangeable camera module. So this is one of my B25, which has got an O3 air unit in it, and that will just slot in there and you just screw it in and plug it into the, uh, the board down here on that little JST. This is very easy to put together and there's some online instructions showing you how to do that. But I want to fit an O4 Pro and you get all these bits and pieces to allow you to do that. But I realized there's actually no instructions that I can find anywhere on how to assemble this. So I've had a couple of goes at this and I thought it might be useful just in case you wanted to uh, put one together yourself. Obviously, if you're buying one already made up, it will just come ready made up. But if you're putting together a frame yourself, this will be useful. Uh, I suggest that you actually activate and maybe even bind this to your goggles before you start and leave that lens protector on because we're going to be doing a little bit of fiddling around. So, what you get are these two side plates and they are actually marked right and left conveniently and I found the best way to put this together is like this. So you get these silicon mount little washers and you put those in here and here so they go in from the inside and they go to the outside. It's the same on both sides. Then I found the easiest thing to do is to use these M2 by 6 screws and put the standoffs in just to give you something to work with. So that is a 22mm standoff and then you get these two 10mm standoffs and they go on the top. Once you know where everything goes, it seems to be good. And hopefully I've got this the right way around. It seems to work. I'm not screwing anything in tight. Goes on the top like that. So these are all going to be just hand tight for the minute. Take that one up a little bit tighter. There we go. Next, you are going to need to take your antenna off your O4 air unit because these need to go down through a couple of tubes here. So, the way I found to do this is if you just take out these bottom two, Okay. Dog's going out. Now, these two are going to be replaced with another couple of screws, so you won't need those, but you need to undo all four of them to get to the antennas. Oops. And you need to lift this up very carefully because there is a little ribbon cable down there, and then you can just gently pull out the antennas, just be careful. Then 
I've got these 3D printed parts here. They're quite complicated little pieces, actually. But if you just feed the cable down through there, don't push it down through there. You will never get it into these parts here. And then these are the side scoops where the antennas come out. I recommend pushing that down through there. And the way this works is this back uh, of the 3D print goes into here and this goes into the front and it should push down snug onto there. And then once that's in there, you can gently just push the antenna down through until it gets to the bottom, which I found to be just about the right distance. Need to give it a bit of a push. There we go. Just be very careful. And you can do the same on the other side. Where's the little slot? There it is. That goes in there. That goes that way round. It's a bit difficult to see on camera probably, but it's... There's an angle there which fits on the angle there. So you push that in. Nicely you can see it. the back of it pushes through that little cutout on the back here. And then you can just push the antenna down into there until it just appears at the bottom. And that seems to be about the right distance to give you enough length on the antenna cable. And then you can just put these back. So that goes on there. goes on there and then you put the top back on put the top two butt screws into here and that's the side that's got the SD card slot on it there we go don't need to screw that's not very tight at all um, I've already taken the mounting screws out of the side here to mount the camera. It just makes life a little bit easier. Okay, so the next stage is to mount this on here. This is the left panel and that slots into there and you leave those two screws out and we're going to replace them with some other ones that come in here. And I think these are, what are they? I think they're 12 mil. Just let me check so that you know which ones they are. They're in twos, but they are 12 mil. So the longer ones go on that side. Don't need to force any of this, they should all just slot in very easily. Oop, I've just forgotten something. This is what caught, <clears throat> caught me out the first time around. Nothing like making mistakes live. So, uh, right. What you need to do is find the correct one. That's That will actually fit onto there like that. It's going to come out the side. So the thing to do, feed that through there and just leave it dangling out the side for now. Like that and then put these in. Oops. OK, 
Again, don't do anything up too tight because you probably want to jiggle it all about a bit just to make sure the cables are going through at the correct angle. And then you can turn that over and you're going to do the same on this side. And remember to push that through there. This keeps all the antenna cables in board of this little frame. Okay. Now, these are M2 by 6, and there's all you don't, there's already two holes in the bottom here that those fit into that didn't have any screws in in the first place. Oops. Come on, Dave. There we go. I'll show you where all this is when I've got my big fingers out of the way. That's good. That's what we've got. So we've got the longer screws on the left side and the shorter screws on the right side. And then you can use these M2x6s to just mount on the other side here of those standoffs, which pulls it all together. surprised there was no online instructions. There was something in the manual which said click here, but there was nothing. Goes in the bottom. That's all good. And one thing I suggest you do now is actually fit the data and the SBUS cable and the power cable in here, because once the camera's in you won't be able to get to it. And that goes that way round. Could of course put that in before, but it doesn't really matter. There we go. Just take that out the bottom there, like that. And now we can fix the antennas in place. And for that, you will need these teeny weeny, I don't know what they are, but they're only, they're flat head, cross head, flat cross head screws. And these go, get that the right way up, just in there. Like that. This one comes up this side, like that. You can see that's the hole where they're going to go. Oh, very neat. Does that make sense? Now just make sure that the antenna cables, now there are, these aren't being pinched here. You'll notice the antenna cables, there is a small gap down the side. So you're not actually squeezing anything out and routing them around that way is the same as happens on the O3 air unit and camera. And this is plastic, by the way, this is injection molded. This seems to be some sort of machined aluminium. Looks very nice. Okay, so that is all looking good, and we just need to mount the camera now. Now, <clears throat> I found it easier just to make sure that everything's loosened off so it doesn't curl up these silicon mounts here. Just loosen them off a bit. So we've got a bit of a little bit of play there. 
make sure they're mounted in. And I found that it seems to be this needs about three twists to get it to fit. This is a little bit fiddly, so hopefully, there we go. And make sure you get the camera the right way up. So the DJI like that should be readable that way around. And then you can just squeeze this in here, making sure that all the cable runs down the back. You don't want that squeezed in there, like that. You can tidy this up afterwards, of course. Just a little bit fiddly. There we are, I can see the screw holes now. So, you can take the original screws that were on the O4 air unit and just, oops, try and get them in the hole. You don't want to do those up tight just yet. But they don't need to be tight at all. Why does that keep falling off there? It's because it's a screwdriver. <laughs> there we go. Same on this side. I normally will do this under a magnifier, so it's a little bit difficult seeing exactly where everything is without that. And again, this is all much easier if you're not having to video it. But I thought since I had a problem finding the instructions, I thought it'd be useful so that everybody else can see how it goes together. There we go. Like that. And then just go around and tweak everything up. It's a very nice little unit, this. So this can be mounted on the Master 3X or the B25. Okay, that's good enough. And let me show you how this goes. There's some extra bits and pieces there. Don't worry, you do get some extra silicon mounts and extra screws. It's always a bit unnerving sometimes when there's some left over because you think you left a screw out. And then all that needs to happen is you mount it on like that and there are screw holes here to mount that in but one there one there one there and one there that's it and like I say you can mount that on the B25 let me just have a look see if I have got that over here yes I've got there we go. So it's a dry built B25. I did a little while ago. I've got two of these. So that can mount the O3A unit like that. Very nice. Or if you want to swap it out for an O4A unit, you can just plug it in like that. Just four screws. It's very quick to change from one to the other. It's a nice, neat little feature. And in many ways, it'd be great if this fitted some other drones as well. Just that one connector to make onto the circuit board. Fantastic. I'll get this all finished off, and then I'll show you how I set this up in Betaflight.